debates and decisions that are shaping our continent now in Europeans. Springtime in Prague, March 2008. Czechs are commemorating four decades of the Prague Spring in 1968. At the time, the clarion call was socialism with a human face. After 20 years of communist rule, the leadership under Dubček seemed to be on the road to liberalization, ending press censorship and reforming the economy. But hardliners in Moscow and other Warsaw Pact countries didn't like it. A few months later, the tanks were sent in to bring Czechoslovakia back into line. There's a memorial to the victims of communism. 200,000 political prisoners, 327 killed at the border, 248 sentenced to death, and 171,000 forced into exile. Among them, the singer-songwriter Yaroslav Hutka. I believed in the future. I had long hair. I believed in the beatniks. There was hope. But then suddenly the Russians came. Life completely changed direction. It turned around 180 degrees. After the invasion, everything went backwards and the police became really, really bad. After the Soviet invasion, Hutka was watched closely by the secret police. But his concerts remained some of the last bastions of free artistic expression in the country. In 69-70, I didn't want to emigrate. I thought it a kind of treason. I was convinced I should stay, that I should do something for my country, for humanity and culture. But the secret police told me, now it's getting serious. You have two options, prison or emigration, nothing else. At least the popular Hutka had the choice. He seriously considered prison, but his wife dissuaded him, and the Hutka family left the country for the Netherlands. In November 1989, Hutka returned home and became the singing face of the Velvet Revolution. There was no such choice for Yuri Grunterad. In the 1980s, the communist regime jailed him for four years for publishing banned literature. Now he keeps an archive of forbidden books. Surrounded by underground leaflets and Samizdat literature, he recalled being beaten and tortured. I remember the snow falling through the window when I was in the isolation cell at Christmas. It was so cold that the water in the latrine froze overnight and the rats ate the soap during the night while I was sleeping. On many of the formerly banned publications on the shelves, H for Havel, Václav Havel, writer, dissident and the first president of the post-communist Czech Republic. He told Euronews that the heritage of 68 is supporting today's dissidents in places like Chechnya, Cuba, Burma and Turkmenistan. Our experiences mean we place a great deal of importance on solidarity with dissidents in other countries where authoritarian power still exists. Havel is a fervent supporter of people in need, a project backing human rights movements around the world. The project's director took part in the Czech Velvet Revolution in 1989 as a student. Any sentiments to the uh, socialistic or communistic ideas could lead to into authoritative or dictatorship regime. But the chief advisor to the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Bohemia and Moravia, one of the last non-reformed communist parties in Europe, doesn't agree. Those who were happy with the Prague Spring 68 would not be happy, I mean, with what is happening in this country nowadays. Depriving people from free uh, health care, in fact, depriving them from a guaranteed retirement fund system, depriving them from many other things. So. That's the key problem of reflecting the past, not opening archives. But a recent project called Open Past now allows the public access to 17 kilometers of secret police files. 
The Czech Republic is a latecomer in this regard. Romania, Hungary and Poland opened their files 10 years ago and Germany did it in 1992. In August 1968, political spring ended with a bang as Warsaw Pact troops invaded. And Vladimir Tuma filmed the hopes of reforms in his country being crushed. He's retired now, but his pictures of the Soviet tanks rolling in were smuggled out to Austria and Switzerland. I was filming among the tanks, sometimes hidden on the balconies, sometimes in the middle of the crowd. There were lots and lots of soldiers and people everywhere around here. The people were defending the radio station, which was still broadcasting, and we tried to stop the Russians taking over the radio station behind me. According to the director of the Institute for Contemporary History, there is a link between the Prague Spring and the Velvet Revolution. But 40 years ago, the imposed regime only survived because of foreign military intervention. When it was clear that this um, foreign force will never intervene again, so the whole structure collapsed like a house of cards, and I think that was the heritage of 68. In the small town of Birun, an old pub is packed to the rafters. The landlord has invited two legends of the 60s, Vladimir Mizik and Radim Hladik, known as the Czech Eric Clapton. In the 60s, music still was a political protest. Later in the 70s, there was a kind of break. The music became more and more commercialized. In the 60s, the protest through music was definitely real. Music was politics. The question, should I stay or should I go, came up for me when I was in London. That was in 1970 or 71. But then, because of my family, especially my mother, I decided to come back to Czechoslovakia. And we asked, why should we have to leave our country? They are the ones who should go. And so, two decades after the Prague Spring, it happened. The Velvet Revolution put an end to the repressive regime and helped to spark the system change all over Central and Eastern Europe towards freedom and democracy.